Hello everyone, thanks for joining me again today. We're going to be talking about this M35 French mess kit that I got for Christmas from my brother-in-law and sister-in-law. Thank you very much. Um, and the silverware set that came with it. Now this mess kit's a little different than any ones I've seen reviewed as in it, it has different markings on it than the French manufacturer markings. Okay. So we're going to jump into that and I'll show you what I found out about this thing. And um, also we're going to talk about the silverware. So sit back and enjoy the review. Okay, I want to start with a little history for you because that's one of the things I love about collecting these things. This mess kit began production sometime in 1935. And somewhere around November 1936, the first ones were delivered to the French military and they began use. Okay, um, production of this mess kit continued through the German occupation of World War II and on until the early 1950s until this one was this mess kit was replaced by the M1952 or the M52 French mess kit. Okay, um, <clears throat> some of the things about it is it's about six inches tall and it's about six inches wide and it's about four inches deep. Um, we'll start with the, the cup here, what I call the cup. It has a folding handle. Um, it's made, the whole kit's made of aluminum. Let me say that in the beginning. But the, it has a folding handle for the cup. Uh, the cup holds seven cups of water or whatever, max to the top. So I kind of put that at about six cups of usable space here. Okay. The little, there's a, another piece here inside. It's like a little tray or a little plate or another little piece to uh, prepare food in it holds two cups max of liquid to the top and I put it at about a cup and a half usable without spilling it over <clears throat> it's also made of aluminum really nice the main pot holds seven cups all the way to the top of the to the rim and that puts it in, in my mind about six cups usable space for liquid to make soups or whatever out of it. Okay, it has a, a, a bale handle. What makes this different than the German kits and all the other ones, the Russian ones, this handle can pass underneath and continues all the way around. It doesn't lock into position to keep it off the fire like those kits do. This one will swing all the way around and that's because the handle is made into these lugs here so there's no way to lock the handle into a position so you have to prop this up with a stick or something to keep it out of the fire if you're going to cook on the ground with it okay the weight of the whole kit it being aluminum is 15.9 ounces so you might as well say one pound it's just 0.1 often being one pound so it's about a pound in weight Okay, getting on to the markings. Usually these French mess kits have a marking here, some kind of stamping. Sometimes it's two bears um, or some kind of manufacturer stamp. But I don't know if you can tell on this camera, but this thing has never been stamped. You see these little markings here, but I believe, I thought that somebody ground off the old markings, but I believe it's from the handle being folded underneath and, and rubbing right there because it's, it's kind of it kind of matches the wear pattern from that okay so what kind of markings are actually on this thing on here are this is these stampings there's one there on the main pot there's a nice one this one's really nice here and get it right on the tray then there's another one on the actual cup with the handle okay I think I got it upside down no I don't that marking is the marking of the 
IDF or Israeli Defensive Force Zahal, I think that's how you say it that's another name for them this mess kit was bought uh, by my brother-in-law and sister-in-law for me from Christmas and they got it directly from Israel so it has these markings on there and it is sold as being used in the 1960s by the Gulani Brigade which is the northern army of, Is of Israel they operate in the northern part of the country so it definitely is by looking at it it's been used really well a lot of meat or something's been cut in this pan over the years okay so it's um I don't think it's a like a remake by like Miltech or something like that that has IDF stampings on it I believe this was used by the Israeli army but my question is to everybody out there these stopped production in 1950s in the 1950s the French company quit making them and there's no stamp on the bottom here from that company so my question is did that French company supply these mess kits to the IDF Israeli army uh, during the 1960s during that conflict that they had there okay so if you have any information about that you can tell me please let me know and comment in the comment section uh, I'll be really curious now I want to talk about the silverware that came with the kit when I first received this I just thought well this is kind of a plain looking spoon there's no markings on this side but when you flip it over right here there is a, I don't know if we can get that on film or not I'm gonna try there's some Hebrew writing and it says the year 1968 stamped on it so this is what I received I hope I hope you can see that <clears throat> but it's kind of a plain looking spoon and I don't know what that writing means it's right there maybe somebody out there can tell me what that says it's probably the manufacturer of this spoon whether it's military I don't know also the kit came with this unmatching fork you can see here it's got some design in it okay only markings on it is this design on the handle and on the front side but on the back side there is some more Hebrew writing I'm I don't know if I'm holding it correctly but that was on the back side of the fork okay so this was sold to my brother-in-law and sister-in-law for me as being used by the Gulani Brigade in 1968 or, or in the in the 60s so uh, if you could get me any information about this I would really appreciate because I'm really curious about this kit and where, where it came from you know um, did the French make this for the uh, Israeli forces and it kind of makes sense to me because when they first became a country they didn't have very many resources that where they could make kits their own kits I know that they were supplied a lot of military uh, stuff from different countries okay so this may be one of them so I hope it's 100% authentic I think it is but uh, leave me your comment to let me know if you if you uh, know something about it okay so now I'm going to take you um, to the woods I'm going to be going on a little trip to go out and do a little hiking and day camping so I'm going to make a meal there at the day camp for you using this mess kit and the silverware okay so here we are out in the woods today with my brother-in-law Jonathan and he's cooking up his own thing over here we'll show you here's the mess kit I've got it in this bag to kind of keep it when it gets dirty from getting all in my pack and getting it all dirtied up so today we're going to be making a dish that is known around the world uh, as kasha or I think I hope I'm saying that right 
but here in the United States it's buckwheat. So inside my the mess kit here, without losing the winds kind of blowing now. I've got a bag of buckwheat here that we're gonna be using to cook, and I got enough for me and my brother-in-law. Got a little bit of beef bouillon in this bag, two tablespoons worth. And in here, this bag, I've got some cut up onion, celery, and carrots. So let me get started with the getting our fire going, and uh, I'll come back. Okay, so today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to use my Trangia stove in this little Chinese wood stove for the first time. And I know you have to have about an inch clearance between the top of your pot and the top of your alcohol stove. So I've got this little can. I think nuts came in it or something. I'm not sure. A long time ago. Had it in the garage. So that's going to sit in there. And this should give me just the right amount of spacing between the top of my alcohol stove and the pot I'm going to be using today. Okay, we're going to kind of let that get started. And I have a little bit of olive oil in here. Let's see if I can get a shot up inside of here. And then we're going to saute the uh, vegetables next. So I'm going to go ahead and add those. While the alcohol stove getting going. And also, I'm using the the Israeli utensils that I showed for this. This is um, this recipe is not exactly how that I, I, I saw on the internet to make this um, a lot of Jewish people take the um, the buckwheat and they um, put it with a raw egg and heat it up until the until the uh, grains absorb the, the egg but I, I was not able to bring any egg out here today so we're just going to cook it the, without that element and now you can you can hear the vegetables already starting to to sizzle in there. So I'll come back whenever we uh, are ready to add the next ingredient. My brother-in-law has got his canteen cup going. And if you're wondering what kind of stove that is, it's the off-brand. <laughs> but actually, it is the off-brand. Uh, mosquito repellent candles he had a, a mosquito repellent candle that came in this container and then the candle got all used up so then he changed it into a he cut a hole in the side and changed it into a a, uh, a stove for his canteen cup so yeah it, technically it is the off brand right <laughs> it's the off brand <laughs> so it's, it, it works pretty good it's, it's really cool Oh, is that what you're making? Nor urban butter. Yes, I am lazy. <laughs> That's not lazy. It's you don't want to spend all your time cooking. You want to enjoy the woods.
nor goodness. Oh, getting all the cheese. <laughs> yeah, I'll we'll play with that. Or whatever that is. Let that boil in a little bit. Okay, so now our vegetables are pretty well sauteed. Now we need to now we need to add um, two cups of water. So I brought my East German kit here, and these little cups here, right up to the very top of these drinking cups, is exactly a one cup measurement. So cooking a buckwheat is pretty easy. All you gotta do is think of a two to one ratio. So if you're using a a cup of buckwheat you just use two cups of water just like rice so here's cup number one here is cup number two coming up right to the top okay and then I want to also add at this point The bouillon, the beef bouillon, two two teaspoons of beef bouillon to give it some extra flavor. Okay, and then we're going to just kind of stir this up and bring it back to a boil, and then it will be time to add our buckwheat. Nice little chair by Trek Ultra. Very light, very easy to put together. Did you sit in it? Yeah. Found it on Amazon. I forgot how much I paid for it. It was actually a gift from my wife. Nice little carry sack bag with lashing points for your pack. And it also comes with this shoulder strap. Them trying to show here all folds up into a size about the size of a of a loaf of bread is about how big this is I like it. I do too. I got another one you want to burn it out. The, lead, the, the candles are all messed up. No, that's okay. You, you'll need it whenever it, uh, that one finally burns away. Yeah. I imagine over time it probably will, won't it? Yeah. The metal it's only, it's only aluminum. It's going to get kind of weaker and weaker. Over time? Yeah. There you go. Stay. Fun doing this. Just getting out. You know what I'm not doing right now? Working. Taking out trash. Yeah. Okay, so we got it back to a boil. And now we're going to add one cup of buckwheat. Stir it in there. I 
and then I need to put my simmer ring on. Kind of slow down the cooking. Here we go. That's better. Now, put our meal back on. Let the let it kind of simmer on low. Mmm. Awesome. Yeah. You can't beat the Nor stuff for uh, convenience. Okay, so here it is. And I tasted it off camera here. And it needs a. I wasn't sure with the bouillon whether to add any salt or not. But it needs a little bit of salt and some pepper. So I got these little packets with me here of pepper. some salt one thing I'm told though I'm missing here is butter and I forgot to bring some butter they say I read that butter is really good with this let me stir this all up here and kind of plate some up and we'll see how it tastes one thing that's good about buckwheat I forgot to mention is it's gluten free it's a it's very very healthy for you it's like a replacement for rice is what I've read so I don't know why it's not that popular here in the United States as it is in other countries but um, it's pretty good stuff I found this in the um, what they call the ethnic section of the uh, grocery store and where the uh, Jewish stuff is at. So uh, this is not whole buckwheat like what a lot of people in different countries eat. But this is what they call cracked buckwheat and it's a medium coarseness. So let me get some of this plated up. All right, so I hope you enjoyed our video today cooking with the, uh, the French mess kit which is marked with Israeli markings on it, which uh, that's kind of a mystery to me still. If you have any information for me about that, please post in the comments below if, if the French government, you know, uh, supplied some mess kits to the Israelis during the 60s or 50s or 60s or whatever. Um, it's a really cool kit. Here it is here, what I, I, the pot that I cooked the... Uh, the actual lunch in still got some food in it and I'm eating out of the little cup insert that was inside and then here is the other part which is the cup slash lid that fits right on top I think I got dirt on the bottom of it but it fits right on top here perfect okay so if you like what you've seen today please click subscribe on my channel and follow me I I try to do a lot of military surplus reviews like this and actually try to if I can go out and actually use it for you in the woods I do kayak fishing videos those more of those will be coming when it warms up more uh, camp cooking videos I love that uh, just things like that so I appreciate your uh, giving me a thumbs up tell me I'm doing okay and your subscriptions and and also thank you for all you subscribers who are out there now I think by time that this uh, video posts I will have 300 subscribers to my channel which is incredible i can't believe it so thanks for watching today and hope you have a good one